Hello and welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Hillsborough County Historic Resources Review Board. It is Tuesday, February 16th, uh, 3.30 p.m. Well, a little after 3.30 p.m. here in County Center. Um, I'm Ryan Crutchfield, the chair. Um, I'd like to see if we have a quorum. Uh, this is Nancy. I actually can't see who's uh, present in the um, in the physical location. So maybe um, Tom Hisney could help out with that. Sure. Yes, uh, we do have a quorum. We have um, one, two, three, five board members in attendance, and then Mr. Nelson uh, is online. Okay. Great. Um, were there any agenda changes or roster updates? Uh, well, I had sent the revised agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, um, uh, which excluded one of the items uh, had been on the previous agenda. There's some application issues that prevented that from going forward. So other than the revised agenda that's in your backup, there are no changes. Okay, great. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, welcome a new member, Virginia Laria. Larea. Larea. Um, as architect, uh, filling the architect position, which is one that's been open for quite a while. So I don't know if you if you want to take a few seconds and introduce yourself to this. <laughs> oh well, my name is Virginia Larea, an architect, and I also an interior designer. And I had the opportunity to work in some historical renovations, large ones, here in the city of Tampa. So uh, when I was somebody told me about the opportunity, said this is great. I would love to do it. Well, good. We're glad to have you here. Thank you. I will welcome aboard. Oh, can I ask you to move your mic down more so that we can right. sure that we can pick you up on the audio? Thank you. Happy with the mask. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll move to the regular meeting items then. You all should have received um, the meetings from the last, or the minutes from the last meeting in your email. If you have had a chance to review them, um, we're looking for a motion to approve or motion to amend. I'll motion. I'll second. Um, okay. All in favor of approving the meeting minutes from last meeting? Aye. 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 Is my mic on? I hear okay. you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was unanimous? Yes. Yeah. Oh, hey, this brings up a point. Um, at the last meeting, and in fact, if you saw one of the votes, it was four to one. Mm -hmm. So we knew there was a person who objected, but we could not tell from the tape who it was. Okay. Uh, so the recording secretary, Mary Lou, was asked, and we don't need to repeat it for this vote, it was clearly unanimous mm -hmm. that uh, when we do the votes, that you do it individually, so that if there is uh, an objection, or at the least, if someone does object, we mark then have that one person identify themselves. So I, I was that one person in that last case. You were? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there any public comment announcement or guest speakers? No, sir. Okay. We can move on to uh, C, staff items then. All right. So the, the first two staff items are... Um, the approvals and the letters that were sent out following your determinations and decisions at the last meeting. Uh, if you recall, there was two items, both dealing with the 525 South Kings uh, designated landmark. Uh, one was uh, uh, where you made a determination of no effect or adverse effect on a proposed rezoning of the property. And then the second was the um, certificate of appropriateness uh, that um, would be for a redevelopment of the site uh, subsequent to the rezoning. So those two letters are in there. And again, those are simply for informational purposes because they reflect the actions that you took at your last meeting. Also, you're going to see that there's a COA approval in here. This is 2021-01. Um, I'm sorry, that's not oh, it. It's 2021-02. Uh, that, if you flip back and... Uh, You'll see it, uh, yeah, so it's 2021-02. This is a COA uh, for the Villa Maydell designated landmark. Now our code provides for administrative approval, meaning me, uh, for things that constitute minor work. 
uh, and I can administratively approve the COA. Uh, I then bring them to your attention at this meeting. There, you, there's no action required. It's already been approved. In this case, it was, uh, they had a leaky roof. Uh, their roof is a flat roof uh, with a parapet all the way around it, so it's not visible from the ground. And they were going to replace it with the materials, not replace it, repair it uh, with the materials that you see. Uh, and again, uh, none of the work is visible from the ground. And so um, I administratively approved it to try to prevent any further water damage to the structure. Understood. And again, that's just for informational purposes. Uh, you, there's no action required. Just a quick question on that, Tom. Didn't this house have this some work done on the roof? Yeah, well, actually, I, I looked that up. They had actually come in uh, some time ago for, I think, a COA, uh, and I guess they never followed through with the work. Okay. As far as I can tell, because I asked the uh, uh, the roofer contractor dealing with this, and because exactly right, Miss Perry, I, I said, well, wait a minute, I think this came up a few years ago, and apparently the work for a few years ago was not, you know, actually completed. Okay, it was even which before. also then. Uh, made me feel confident in administratively approving this because essentially the same work was approved by the board some years ago. Sure. Uh, when it comes to the administrative approvals, the code says I may approve. I don't have to. I can always bring it to the board, and a few years ago I did. So that also, thank you for reminding me, also led me yeah. to, uh, to feel confident in approving it. You, know, you see, because it has an odd facade to it, so I, I, I remember, remember that. seeing that. Yes, so. and I included the same condition in this administrative approval that had been approved and in, included in the board approvals was that yeah. the roofing material could not overlap the top of the parapet. And that was right. the same condition <laughs> that was reflected previously. So. All right, okay. All right, um, then that wraps up the staff item, sir. Uh, great, thank you. So we will uh, move to item D, board items. And we have two items before us today, it looks like. All right, so both of these board items deal with the AP Dickman House, designated historic landmark in Ruskin, Florida. Uh, it is owned by Mac Miller. Um, there's two things here. There's gonna be a certificate of appropriateness where you're gonna review the work that's proposed and approve it or not. And then secondly, he's seeking a uh, historic preservation grant uh, to help pay for the work. Um, the application materials packet that's in your book that starts with the, the handout that has a, like a table of contents and everything, this packet was prepared by Mr. Miller. All in all, he did a fine job with it. Uh, there are uh, five main projects involved here. Repairs to the front porch and columns. Uh, repainting of the house exterior, re-roofing an attached carport, uh, repair some roof leaks and fascia damage, replace uh, jealousy windows on the second floor, and those are the five projects that are proposed. Allow me to point out that on the painting, that actually would not require a COA. Our code does, uh, if, you're, if you have a historic structure and it's been painted historically, you don't need board approval or a COA to paint it. However, I included it in this package uh, for your review because that the painting is is included in the grant. So okay, since it's included in the grant, I had him included in the COA so you can review that. Um, at this point, uh, uh, Mr. Miller, are you online, sir? We are. Fantastic. I'll allow Mr. Miller, uh, Mr. Miller, just so you know, uh, the board has the complete packet uh, that you sent in and the form that you sent it in. So, uh, and then included a few of the extra items you had sent in, like the colored uh, swatches for the paint job. So, uh, using your document that you sent me, if you want to then go through that uh, project by project, they will be able to follow along. So you're asking us to make a presentation? Yeah, yes, please. Yeah, okay. describe the work, like the five different projects uh, that you are proposing here. He yeah. wants you to describe the work. Oh, okay. I'll ru run through it um, quickly. Uh, job number one, the columns on the porch floors. There's some rotting under two columns on the historic unenclosed first floor porch. So what we have to do is jack up the two of the columns, uh, replace 
the uh, boards underneath that and also replace the rotted floor um, <clears throat> flooring that's, um, and paint that, that's number one. The repainting of the house exterior in- uh, it's Mr. Mr. Miller, if, yeah. if you don't mind, let's go through them one at a time and then see if any of the board members have any questions. And again, they have the photos and all you sent in, but it might be uh, easier to go through each project one by one and then ask if the board has any questions before we move on to the next section. Sounds good, got them okay. some porch floor. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, yeah, this is Charlie Nelson. Hello, uh, Mac and Melanie. Nice to see you. Uh, I did have one question about the porch. I just wasn't clear. It looked like it was a four by 50 section of the porch that was being repaired. Is that the entire front porch? Yes. Okay. I thought it was, but well, I wasn't actually, sure. Actually, um, no. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the, we're cutting back about um, three to four feet, depending on where the rot is and the next good stud. So we are not doing the entire porch. It doesn't all have to be replaced. Okay, thank you. And I noticed on there that the, the two columns you have listed to be reinforced from underneath. Um, what about the railings that I see displaced? What's happening with those railings? The railings are in, uh, they look worse than they are. The railings are in need of minor, I would say, repair, not, not reconstruction. Okay. So a lot of that can be done with um, uh, simply by a carpenter with some wood putting in some paint. They're mostly displaced by some wisteria vines, which I may have to, which I may have to face cutting. <laughs> Is there any other discussion or questions around uh, the first item on their list? So for clarification, Mr. Miller, that repair of the railings is included in the estimate in the project or not? Well, no, because I think yeah. that's quite minor. Okay. All right. Thank you. But, but we will, as an incidental expense, uh, make okay. sure, I mean, you know, bear it ourselves. Okay. Ready to move on to number two? Yeah, I guess, uh, could you move on to the second item, repainting the house exterior? Mm -hmm. uh, repainting the house exterior, the, um, since 1910 or 1911, the initial construction uh, has been white on the outside with the green uh, trim and uh, gray porch flooring, to my certain knowledge, since about the 1960s on the porch flooring. We're using Sherwin-Williams paint um, and the paint samples are included. Mr. Miller, I was reading through the, um, hold on a minute, I'm trying to get my glasses cleared here. Um, on the paint requirements or the specifications, where it says first coat, is that just ba basically a primer? That is the painter's intention. Is that the first coat is the primer? Yeah, I'm not sure. It says condition uh, sealer. So it could be a little bit different. We'll just have to get the spec of that material if you want to do it, but it will protect the wood from water damage. If it's a sealer, it should, but it doesn't really say so. No, well, yeah, you'll have to. I don't think they give you the cut sheet for that. Okay. Wait a second, down below it, it says additional option, prime new, okay, the new wood, two coats, deck paint. All right, that's on the flooring, I guess. That's a separate. Yes. Separate expense, yeah. Okay. Um, and the first coat, you know, it says condition or sealer tinted to finish color if color change. So if there's no color change, perhaps there will not be a conditioner. Oh, he's just saying tinted. Um, frankly, we figure he knows what he's doing. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Um, any further discussions or questions around the mm -mm. exterior paint? Look okay, could you please move on to item three, re-roof of attached mm -hmm. carport? I did have just one quick other question. It's not big here, but um, on a couple of those pages, I'm seeing that um, wire go up. Is that a grounding wire? That is, you tell her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what you're probably looking at is, believe it or not, old copper tubing back when the house um, previous to the 1960s was in part heated by gas. And okay. so the old copper tubing goes up by uh, the window, for example, where on page two at Delta, where water damage is specified, that's what you're seeing. Okay. If you're looking at page two E as an echo, uh, that is yeah. a telephone lead, I think, okay. which will probably be removed as a no longer needed. Right. right. I think I will leave the old copper piping just for fun. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. <coughs> Shall I go on to number three, the carport? Yes, please. Okay. So um, the carport was not part of the 1910 construction, of course. Um, it was added uh, sometime in the 19, early in the 1960s and when the house was designated by Hillsborough County and by the National Register of Historic Places, uh, the carport was in place. It uh, is attached to the house um, and that was one of the problems with uh, the needing of the re-roofing uh, of it because we're getting seepage down the side of uh, the building, and even though the novelty siding is a by and large arch pine, you sure as hell don't want a lot of rain water coming down there. We have um, tried to patch the carport up in the past. That has not sufficed, so now we just need to just strip that mother down and re-roof re 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 it. Uh, we would do it with the materials that were um, used when it was initially designated. When I'm looking at page 3D, is that on the ground looking straight up to that wall? Uh, 3D. Uh, the, you mean the door? Yeah, that's the under porch. It, yeah, it looks like, uh, yeah, which like Virginia the under said the under of the porch. Roof. It's your photo yeah. that you marked 3D that you sent in. Oh. Okay, right. so there's several. Maybe it's 3C. It's the underside of the carport. There's a couple 3Ds. It's the first oh, okay, 3D. Yeah. Two, three oh, Ds. boy. Okay. Okay, so uh, there's a sequence of pictures. The one that has uh, two by four, or two by six beams across the top of it shows the, shows the water damage uh, on the underside of the carport. Okay. The one that uh, shows a white door um, and your color photo shows a lot of mildew on the door and a lot of water standing uh, in the carport itself, which is a concrete pad. And the first page, no, the second page shows the roof with standing water on it and how it's joined to the, um, how it's joined to the house. Mm -hmm. Are those beams intact still? Probably they will not need to be replaced. It's a little hard to tell until you actually get into there. Is there going to be some um, something put in place to help let it drain better? If, if it's pulling yeah, on the... It will have a, it will have a stalking. <laughs> it will have a grade. Okay. Uh, any other questions or uh, comments on item three? Okay, can you explain or go over item four for us? 
Okay, now, number four is mild, mildly complicated. There is a little illustration with arrows inside the text that may make it more clear. In any case, um, the fascia is fairly simple, but it's on the west side of the house. The roof leak is also on the main portion of the west facing slope of the roof and also on the north uh, facing side uh, of the roof where um, there may well be some problem with the um, underlay of the, the roofing. So in effect that has to be uh, pulled up and, uh, and fixed. So there's this minor but significant leakage on the porch and in one of the upstairs rooms. If we look again at the picture on the designation report here, it kind of shows that roof and there's just so many nooks and crannies oh, that, yeah. um, in that particular roof. And I think that's part of what he's trying to show in this drawing. Yeah, if you look at uh, illustration uh, four Bravo, yes, four B, the one with the red and green arrows, that uh, pretty much indicates the areas of concern. It's it's tricky because um, old houses, like old boats, tend to, to settle, and mm -hmm. where the roof meets the uh, wooden structure gets particularly tricky. And the water will seep to the lowest point. <clears throat> Can I talk about the underlayment? That you have one damaging size. Okay. Um, if there's no further questions or comments at this point in time, can you talk about the jealousy windows? Okay. On the uh, on the second floor, on the eastern facade of the house, this is point number five. Uh, there were some jealousy windows that you can uh, see here in illustration 5C as in Charlie, and also from the inside. And these are those narrow glass uh, <laughs> windows, jalousies that, that leak like hell. Leak. Well, they leak air. <laughs> they leak air. They leak air. They don't And um, what we would like to do is to restore those as close as possible to the, uh, be compatible with the original fenestration of the house. The original fenestration of the house was way back in 1910-11, of course, double hung windows. Um, and we are using double hung windows for replacement of the, of the jalousies. And the same is true of the uh, door, which has a jalousy insert uh, in it. So that jealousy insert will be replaced with uh, impact glass, which has a series of what I think are called lights, is that right? Yeah. Which in effect are cross hatchings. And the cross hatchings are uh, you know, approximates of the fenestration of the door on the first floor of the house, which is immediately below, below the second floor door, which has now uh, the jealousies which are wish to replace. And it's turning out to be a lot easier and uh, much more wind resistant to replace the entire door rather than trying merely to find a piece of glass and stub it in there. So what is the material on the door? What's it made of? The, the door itself when finished it's made of fiberglass. It will look like wood, and it is, it is fiberglass, as uh, is the replacement fenestration. No, for it's not. Wood and, and covered by wood. The okay. windows are, win are wood with a clad, um, aluminum cladding. Mm -hmm. The door is fiberglass. Um, all the windows in the door have impact-resistant glass. All right. The, uh, the windows are made by gel wind.
I'm sure this might be in is, front of me here, but how many is the original door wood? Yes, it is. But wood is no longer <laughs> no one will touch wood because it rots. Um, it's not it's not made. They don't make wood like they used to. It isn't hard pine. It, it won't sustain. Um, there are issues with putting glass into wood, which is why the windows also are aluminum clad, especially in Florida. They want um, to seal them from the rain and the wind, basically. You can't, get, you can't get straight up wood and be in code or be, you know, hurricane resistant. Yeah, she will not find any wood doors that will pass the pressures for, especially in that area, because I think you're in zone two. Hurricane. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. The wind loads will not pass, so she has to go with uh, either aluminum or, wind or vinyl. And we don't like, you know, vinyl yuck. Yep. So we're doing our best. We're really doing our best to um, give the historic look. And Just as a point of uh, point of information, I think we've had this question come up before on other homes, and that's the answer we've always gotten, is Ooh, that yeah. wood's not appropriate. Mr. Miller, I just have a question out of curiosity. Sure. The, the door you're replacing, where does it go? To the top of the carport? Yes. Yeah. It, oh, okay. <laughs> I know. I saw that, too. I was like, okay. The door to nowhere. Yeah, okay. Well, oh, thank you. Used to step out on there. I mean, it's fun for sunning. Um, but now, if we get it re-roofed, we won't really be able to be out there. Um, and there's a bit of a drop. Um, but yeah, the door to nowhere because it used to be a porch. Okay. Years ago. It's also a very good second floor <clears throat> fire escape if one needs that. Uh, thank you. I was just curious. Um, much covers it. So that's the. All right. Do we have to vote on this whole thing in two separate pieces, I guess? Uh, well, again, right now you're going to vote on the, the proposed improvements, not on the grant. That'll be next. Uh, and uh, if you want to vote together, uh, you know, as one package, that's fine. Uh, it's certainly your discretion. If you want to vote separately or as a package, that's up to you. I Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Charlie Nelson. I would like to move that we approve the COA has proposed for the following three reasons. Um, first of all, I think uh, it, just as a preface, I would say that Mr. Miller and Ms. Hubbard are dedicated to Ruskin history and dedicated to this house, uh, which should make all of us feel good in approving this COA. But the three reasons are, I think the repairs as submitted are appropriate repairs and restoration that will ensure further maintenance of this home into the future. Second, uh, uh, the, re the replacement of the jealousy windows is a, is a, will make this home more historical in its appearance and that it's a return, in effect, to a closer look that it had before, which I think is something that we should encourage. Right. And thirdly, and most importantly, I think it does correct some potential safety hazards, particularly on the porch area, which I think are important. So for those three reasons, I would move that we uh, approve uh, the COA has proposed. I will second. So we currently have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion I around this? I have a question. Okay. Um, based on the standards for rehabilitation for their um, grant that they're trying to get, would it be approved with them changing the materials based on the hurricane standards? It will still be okay? Should, yeah. They won't have a problem? No, they shouldn't have any problem with that because um, I think even the, I don't know if they've worded or not in the um, standards that are set out there, but I think reasonable solutions in this day and age is to go with the safety and per, oh, um, yeah, of course. precautions on it as opposed to just going with the, mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, what we might say was that in those days, they may have wanted to use this other stuff if they had that choice then, but they didn't. Okay. You know, so um, it doesn't exclude them. I think if they got ever up to the historic federal level, it might, 
but I don't <clears throat> think at this this level there's any, any concerns with that. Yeah, it's this board's d determination as to whether proposed materials and repairs are appropriate or not, and then uh, with the grant likewise. So it is the determination of this board as to whether something materials or whatever are appropriate. I have a suggestion just in case of uh, the historical restoration uh, for the grant uh, raises a red flag is to include Florida product approvals on the door and the window because that will give you uh, a stronger case that is for uh, protection of the dwelling. So you just add, they will have to add it, they'll have to have that from their contractor have what added it's the now? Florida product approval of the door and the windows that means that they will pass the wind loads the hurricane that, yeah hurricane mitigation. wind loads so that's the reason why they are selecting that and they're not going with a wood door or wood frame for the wind mitigation yeah because it's required for code in renovations yes well uh, allow me to point out and to remind the applicants as well that all this work that if any work requires a building permit they must get a building permit for that work yeah. And I, I'm certain that replacing a door requires a building permit, and I would presume that to get that permit, your door yeah, will have to, to meet you know, in the current drawing. requirements for everything you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tom, it's Mary Lou. Who um, seconded the motion? Uh, I, Curtis Brown. I guess Curtis did, yeah. All right, thank you. Brown, okay. Sorry about that, we'll, we'll try and, okay. and remind you. <laughs> Um, so with that, again, we have a motion and second. A um, couple of points have been discussed. Is there any other discussion or are you ready for a vote? Um, thank you, Charles, for putting it in good um, measure as to why we want to approve it. <laughs> I was sitting here trying to write notes for that. and You already had it done. Um, I'm no. learning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any more comments. Okay, if we can uh, all approved, say aye. 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 Uh, Mary Lou, that was unanimous. So the motion has passed, and we can move on to board item number two. So this is the historic preservation grant that has been requested in connection with this project. Um, let me flip back to the start of this. For 12500 um, yep. So the terms of uh, our preservation grants are, it's available only to designated historic landmarks. Um, the amount of that you can ask, uh, uh, any property owner can request one grant per year. The grant can include multiple projects such as this grant. Uh, the maximum award is $12,500 or 50% of the cost of the project, whichever is less. Uh, in this case, the estimated cost of the project is uh, $25,952.18. Half of that would be slightly more than twelve five. Yeah. so the grant maximum grant amount is $12,500. Um, the... Um, you will be making a recommendation on the grant, not approving it or not, but you will be making a recommendation for the grant, and then if you uh, that recommendation will then go to the Board of County Commissioners, and then they will uh, vote whether to approve the grant or not. Uh, in the past, these grants have always appeared on the consent agenda of the board and have been approved without discussion. So, you know, they, they clearly defer to your your recommendations in most ca in the cases that I'm aware of. Um, so then, uh, in the course of the discussion, there was a mention about uh, that some of these estimates did not include potentially extra work. Um, the grant is going to be capped at 12.5. So, if at the end of the day these projects end up costing more, uh, their grant will still be 12.5. If at the end of the day uh, the projects come in a little less than what's projected. Uh, the grant would be half of the actual cost of the project. So it cannot be more than 12.5 uh, in the in a circumstance where for some reason the projects came in under budget, then it would be 50% of the actual cost of the work. Is there some sort of final accounting where when it's all done that that's submitted and you yes, determine that? they are going to have to uh, submit 
Uh, there's a form that we send out, and for this, they're going to have to do a separate form for each one. Uh, they will submit the final invoice from the contractor uh, to confirm what the cost was um, uh, for each project. And I think I know the answer to this, but just in case, um, we hadn't spent anything this fiscal, fiscal year, so we're still at 25000 total. I'm sorry, ma'am? Our grant amount we have to give is $25,000. Yes, yes, the total grant we amount we have, uh, yes, is 25000 per year. Uh, part of that is going to be utilized by the last grant you awarded, which was for the, the uh, Costa Chandra House on uh, Lake Magdalene Boulevard. And uh, after we talk about this grant, I'll give you a quick update on that one. Uh, however, that grant is only, uh, the grant amount is like $2,200. Uh, so there's somewhere around twenty two, twenty three thousand left in the in the grant fund for this year. What is the fiscal year that we go by? The fiscal year is starts October first. So uh, yeah, there are more than sufficient funds uh, in the grant fund for that. Thank you for bringing that up. So I'll motion to make the recommendation to the board to approve the grant. I'll second that. Okay, any uh, other discussion? All in favor of the recommendation of providing the grant, say aye. 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 It's a unanimous vote. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Mr. Miller, um, I'll be sending the necessary paperwork. Let me remind you that until the grant is approved by the board, you cannot expend any money on any of these projects. Any money you expend before the grant's approved by the board will, cannot be reimbursed. Can you affirm that you understand that, sir? <laughs> Sounds good. I'll, okay, and I'll be sending you, I'll be sending you the necessary paperwork. So there'll be a grant agreement that you'll have to sign and return. And anyway, I'll be getting that to you in the near future. Thank you very much for your consideration and work, everyone. Thanks, Thank Bob. You. You're, you're welcome. Uh, as a quick update on the last grant, for the Costa Chandra House, uh, you know that grant was granted, and uh, to replace nine windows in the house, uh, there's Final like 64 nine. windows in the house. These are the last nine that have not been replaced. The the, the contractor they chose is the same contractor who's done the other 55 windows, uh, and uh, there was a uh, estimated completion date of January 1st of 2021, which was felt to be plenty of time. However, they're due to manufacturing delays on the part of the contractor. They did not meet that date. The windows hadn't even been made yet. <laughs> uh, and so they had to ask for an extension uh, from the Board of County Commissioners. That extension doesn't come back to this board. You know, you've already approved it. Uh, the board did approve the extension. So now they have a completion date of June 30. However, I just heard from the property owner <laughs> that the windows were made, but they're the wrong size. So they have to be oh, made. <laughs> mm. So anyway, they... Uh, but their new completion date is June 30, so imagine uh, spring they cleaning still should when have, have plenty of opportunity to, to get it done and not have to get another extension. <laughs> thank you, You're thank you for the update. That out. You're not cleaning 64 <laughs> windows. You're hiring right. somebody. Well, there we are with that. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we have any new business? Uh, no, sir. Not unless the board does. No. Don't have any. Um, our next scheduled meeting is March 16th, 2021 at 3 p.m., a venue to be determined. And actually on that point, uh, since the, the, just produced the, uh, we've got confirmation that your next meeting will be at Saunders Library at 3 o'clock. Uh, and I'll certainly send everyone the address. Saunders Library is where we met last time. Okay. Ms. Lorea, it's uh, Saunders Library is just up the uh, Nebraska Avenue, a little bit south of Lake Palm or okay. seventh and uh, it, it'll be the same kind of setup as we have here. Okay. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I gotta tell you because of uh, uh, the continuing effects of COVID and, and impacts on communication staff who's really stretched thin having to do all these hybrid meetings, hopefully we'll remain on schedule, um, but uh, for various reasons like this meeting got moved to this room because of a conflict with other meetings. So. 
I'll certainly keep everyone updated as to where the venue and the time will be. And we appreciate everyone's patience and understanding and cooperation with carrying out these meetings. Uh, communication staff does a wonderful job, and uh, but they are stretched very thin in trying to manage all these different meetings. Sure, that's fine. I just got to memorize everyone's voices because with these covering, I can't tell who's talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Mr. Chairman, I, I can't. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I can report to you that I'm getting my first vaccine tomorrow, so hopefully I'll have my second and be able to join you yeah. uh, in person next time. Congratulations. Well, I've got both shots, so I'm did. doing good. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, with Magic that. today. That was good. Oh, yeah. That will uh, adjourn the meeting. Oh. Thank you. Tom. Thank you, Thank you all. Yeah, so everybody, I have... Uh,